Hey friends, welcome back to the Proverbs 31 Ministries podcast, where we share biblical truth for any girl in any season. I am your host today, Megan Ryan, and I'm joined by my friends, Shay Hill and Ashley Jackson. And if you're watching on YouTube, we're also happy you're here. We're actually, this is part three of a four part series we are in about prayer. Um, And so if you've missed the last two episodes, we encourage you to go back and listen. In episode one, we kind of talked about what some of our fears around prayer are, maybe some of the things that we do that overcomplicate it and actually maybe a little bit simpler than we think. And then in episode two, we actually heard from Ashley about um, how to ask God because he's powerful um, and what it looks like to pray without ceasing in our everyday lives. So Ashley, tell us what you do at Proverbs real quick before we get into our conversation today. So I help with all things social media. Yes, we love that. Mm -hmm. And Shay, what do you do at Proverbs? Yeah, so my name is Shay. I work on Lisa's content team here at Proverbs 31 Ministries. So I work on her books, her Bible studies, and all the many things that spin off from those things. So you do a lot and we are thankful. (laughs) We all do a lot. (laughs) Yeah, we're scrappy girls around here. (laughs) Um, So I'm thankful because Shay is one of my friends in real life. And so um, when it comes to prayer, she's someone I go to often. um, And she is someone who has actually walked through some of the hard prayers that I have not seen answered um, and how to walk through seasons of disappointment. And so Shay, we're really excited to hear from you. Um, Your wisdom is something I cherish a lot in my life. So I'm just going to hand it over to you and we'll get started. Thanks, Megan. And thanks, Ashley. I'm excited to be with both of you guys today and friends, wherever you're tuning in from. If this is the first time you've been tuning into this mini series, it's been so good so far. Um, If you haven't listened to the other episodes, I want people to go back and listen to them. It's been awesome. Um, But yeah, today's conversation, as much as we talk about the power of prayer and the why behind prayer, I think we have to, and as, as we were planning this series, I was like, we have to talk about the grief and mm. disappointment around prayer. Um, because I mean, and honestly, just saying that it stings, you know, like it's honest and it's true, but it's just hard, you know? Um, and so me, Megan, Ashley, friends who are listening in today, chances are we entered this conversation talking about grief and disappointment around prayer in two different scenarios. There may be more than two, but I really feel like there's only two. So if you feel like there's more than these, you know, just give me some grace. But the first one is we've been praying for an answer or a solution in one area for a long time without seeing change. Mm. Or the second one in the past, we've prayed about something important to us. And what happened was the opposite of the result that we were hoping for. So there's a chance that maybe you've experienced both of these situations in your life. I know that I have, and I'm not here today because I have found a way around disappointment and grief in my prayer life. If, if that's what you were hoping to hear today, I'm sorry. Like I I wish I had a better answer for that. Um, but I'm actively in this place. I I actually told our friend Kaylee, who's on the podcast a lot yesterday, that even just in prepping for this, it just almost felt like a heaviness or like a pit in my stomach because I just know in my own life, this has created so much angst, not just in my relationship with prayer and the consistency of it in and out of my life, but ultimately my relationship with God. Mm -hmm. And I know that there's so many people on the other side of listening to this conversation today that are in that exact same place. Um, For me in particular, in this topic of grief and disappointment, um, I've actually never talked about this publicly um, before outside of, you know, conversations with friends or anything. But there is a specific prayer request that my family and I have been praying for for over seven years now. Um, And so I feel like even in like Bible times, you would read different stories where it was like, so-and-so prayed for this for, you know, five years or 10 years, Mm -hmm. or sometimes it was very long, like 40 years or something like that. But in the context of my life, only being 28, being, you know, that old and having been praying literally the same prayer requests for seven years and seeing very little change. I mean, I think the prayers that we've been, that we're praying now are the same prayers we were praying in 2016. And it makes me so sad to just think about that for multiple reasons. But one of which is I think about in the timeline of six years, seven years, and how many things in my life have changed. And to see zero movement in this one area is just kind of maddening, honestly, you know? And so I just share all that to say, I hope that you feel encouraged that this conversation is not coming from someone that has, like I said, like found an outlet to escape disappointment. And this is not a how I got through this lesson to glean from, unfortunately, but this is very much more of a, this is how I'm stumbling through this Mm -hmm. conversation. Um, And so when I think about the grief and disappointment that we have around prayer, like I said, there's possibly two different scenarios we're entering into this conversation of 
like I kind of fall into the first category in the example that I gave. There's something I've been praying for a really long time and I've seen zero movement in. It necessarily hasn't necessarily been a no, mm. but it's been a very long not yet. Mm. Okay. Um, so you're in that like waiting process. Yeah. Or the second scenario is I prayed for this and not only did that not happen, but it was almost like God allowed something else to, yeah. pro- to happen that wasn't even on my radar. Um, so as I think about those scenarios, there's really two places that I think I found of like our options other than, you know, continuing to press in and pray. And I'll get to that in a second. But these are kind of our, our human responses mm-hmm. that we could have. The first one is we could ignore our feelings of grief, grief and disappointment. So we could feel the grief and disappointment. We could numb out and pretend that we don't feel that way. Uh, We could stuff those emotions. We could not be honest about them. And we could just kind of coast, you know, like kind of push away the hard emotions that we feel. Now, do you feel like the person in that place is still praying and saying, like, I believe God? Or do you feel like they're just ignoring it entirely? I think coming out of that scenario of either they're, I think it depends on what they're praying for. Okay. If they're in that long, not yet, maybe you are continuing to pray, but maybe the frequency mm-hmm. of the prayers is getting less and less and your discouragement is just getting higher and higher. Mm-hmm. Or if it's the aftermath of something where like God did give an answer of a yes or a no, mm-hmm. and it was a no, then you may take kind of a prayer hiatus of a yeah. prayer sabbatical and say like, I really believe in the power of prayer, but I just, I don't have it to give to engage in that right now. So Mm -hmm. that's kind of one outlet is like, you feel all of these things and this like angst towards God and you can't bring yourself to express it just yet, you know? Mm -hmm. So it it really affects you in your prayer life where you just kind of numb out and you pretend you disengage. That's kind of one option. And that can overflow into the second one, but I don't think they have to be mutually exclusive. You could just stop turning to prayer altogether. You Mm -hmm. could resist, you could disconnect, you could choose to stop participating in prayer, which Ashley talked about in the last episode is really just talking to God. Mm -hmm. You could stop talking to God, almost like if you have a falling out with a friend. Mm -hmm. If you have a falling out with a friend and you just feel like, you know what, rather than press through like some really hard conversations, implement some boundaries, like hash this out, let's just cut our losses and and walk away, you know? And the reason that this won't work, or I'll say the reason this won't work for me is because I feel like I've reached this place in my walk with the Lord where I've been walking with him for a really long time since I was young. And I've just like, I have decided like, I am not going anywhere, you know, Mm -hmm. like I know that I was born and I know that I'm headed toward heaven. And those are two kind of big timeline places and the rest in between, I'm not so sure about all the time, but I'm not going anywhere. And so I don't know, like if you guys relate to kind of these options of, you know, you could numb out or you could really just stop engaging with God altogether. Um, But really there's a lot of reasons why long-term that will not work. Mm -hmm. You will get yourself to a place that you are, um, so disillusioned, so disappointed, so devastated, and just not, you're not coping really with like the grief and disappointment. I think that's the big Mm -hmm. thing with like the first option that I mentioned of ignoring your feelings Mm -hmm. is it's, you're not acknowledging Mm -hmm. this hurts and I'm upset, you know? Um, so neither of these will work. Are they short-term coping mechanisms? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Have I done both of these things? 200%. Um, And is God like aware that we're going to do that? He 100% is. is. Right, (laughs) right. But I want us and I want for myself to stay connected to God and continuing to participate in the gift of prayer that he he's given us that gift. He's given us that outlet, you know, like he's a relational God. He wants to be close. And so here's where I landed out of all the options, either post grief and disappointment of a prayer that was told no or during the process, you're where you're like me. And you're like, I've been praying for the same thing for seven years. I'm exhausted and I'm hopeful, but I'm getting a little less hopeful every single day. Um, So here's where I landed. I think we can hold both our disappointment and our desire to continue to pray, which is really a desire to continue to, you know, grow in our relationship with God at the very same time. Mm -hmm. We can process both our grief and remember what's true about God at the very same time. I know Lisa Turkers has taught me so many times over and over again, sorrow and celebration can coexist at the very same time. Mm -hmm. And so I just 
jotted down some feelings of ways that this could kind of like coexist for us. Um, we could be, we can be waiting and seeking. Mm -hmm. We can be skeptical and confident. We can be trembling and trusting. We can be disappointed and hopeful. We can acknowledge our feelings and speak and live the truth of who God is at the very same time. And the reason that I feel like this is the best option, and I really feel like scripture points us in this direction, which I'll get to in just a second, is because it feels like this is the only option that's like livable long time over a long period of time. Yeah. You know, like yeah. when you're walking the road of just the Christian life, and also walking, you know, a season of praying for something for a long time and you feel like you haven't really gotten any relief. I have found the only way to like remain authentic and authentically engage with God, like authentic with myself and my feelings and continuing to engage with the Lord is this place, like mm -hmm. holding both at the same time, almost having like yes. both of our hands open. Mm -hmm. And like in my right hand, I'm holding all of my feelings and I'm not judging myself for the way that I feel them. I'm not polishing them. I'm not... Um, putting my like biblical perspective on them yet. I'm not right. doing that. I'm just acknowledging like, yeah. this is how I feel. Yeah. And it's really not pretty. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, probably not something I would ever like share, you know. And then in the other hand, in my left hand, I'm holding everything I know to be true about who God is. Like mm -hmm. you were talking about actually like praying to the ability that I know God is able because I've walked with him long enough to know also that he could change this, you know, and it's it's maddening to feel like he's not right now but also it hasn't shaken my faith that he could, mm -hmm. you know? And I think that's important um, to acknowledge. And as I was really thinking about this conversation of just grief and disappointment, I found myself in the book of Lamentations. And if you don't know anything about the book of Lamentations, I'm gonna give you a little context. So put your Bible study hat on for a second. But Lamentations is a book in the Old Testament. It's written by the prophet Jeremiah. And it consists of poems or songs that are mourning the conquest of Jerusalem and the kingdom of Judah. So there's no doubt that this book is consisted of words of grief and disappointment. And these people are mourning. Like I remember I was going through a really hard season in college and I found myself in the book of Lamentations and had no idea what the historical context was, but I just felt seen. Mm -hmm. I think the same way that we uh, feel like when we sometimes read the Psalms where it's kind of chaotic because <laughs> they're talking about um, their feelings and then they're like, but you are my God and my refuge mm -hmm. and my strength. But that's what I think they're doing is they're allowing yes. space for both oh. their feelings and the facts of who God is to coexist at the exact same time. Yes. And it feels a little chaotic, but isn't that true about like us too, you know? Yeah. And so um, in Lamentations, I'm going to read it in just a second, but we're going to specifically hone in on chapter three, starting in verse 21. And there are pretty much two and a half chapters before this of not a lot of hope, not a lot <laughs> yeah. of truth. Uh, just almost like you're reading the prophet Jeremiah's like journal of mm -hmm. his like raw, honest thoughts. And mm -hmm. he's just kind of going to town, honestly. But then you enter chapter three and I'm going to read it out of my Bible. This is the ESV and starting in verse 21. So he's, I mean, just to give you context, verse 20, he says, my soul continually remembers it and is bowed down within me. Mm -hmm. I mean, he is sad. Like he yeah. is mourning. He is grieving. His soul is downcast like the Psalms we'll talk about. And then in verse 21, listen to what this says. This is the same author. Remember, so he just said, my soul is downcast. My soul is bowed low within me. But this I call to mind mm. and therefore I have hope. Mm. And there's a colon right here. So he's kind of expanding on how he has hope. Mm. The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. The Lord is my portion, says my soul. Therefore, I will hope in him. Yeah. And it's really the first time in this entire book that a glimmer of hope starts to emerge. Mm -hmm. Like it starts to flicker. And throughout the rest of the book, I even double checked this morning in my own little Bible study time. He doesn't just continually jump to praise songs for the rest of the book. Mm -hmm. He continues to allow the truth of what he knows to be factual about God to coexist with his feelings mm -hmm. of the morning and the grief. There's even another verse, I think it's in chapter three, where he's talking about like the depth of his tears that he's feeling, but he's continuing to know great is your faithfulness, Lord. You are my portion. I will hope in you. Mm -hmm. And so I share that because you may have not known, I mean, you may have known the book of Lamentations is kind of sad, but you mm -hmm. may have not known like why. 
Um, and I think it's important to just really talk about like the emerging of that verse in 21, like where it says, but this I call to mind. Mm. And so to kind of close our conversation today, there's three things I want us to remember. And then I'm reminding myself, like I said, I'm very much stumbling through this in real time that I want us to put into practice today. So number one, if you notice in verse 21, I'm going to read it again. It says, but this I call to mind. I think what that author, what the author there is really urging me to do is pay attention to what I'm paying attention to. Yeah. So when we are walking through grief, when we are walking through disappointment, we can feel those things. I think mm-hmm. God like wants us to. He didn't strip us of having human emotion. You know, mm-hmm. we can feel those things. But at the same time, I have to be intentional that as I'm processing those emotions, that it's not overflowing into my core beliefs about mm-hmm. God. And I think that's really important to say because it, it doesn't lead to an overall like doubting that, you know, God exists or that he's there or that he's listening. It may mean that you're temporarily doubting like his care for you or his kindness toward you or his ability to hear you in this situation. Like, I think all those things are really valid, mm-hmm. but I think paying attention to what we pay attention to means that we are saying what Lam- what this verse says in verse 21, like I'm calling this to mind. And I appreciate the way that he says that because it doesn't, it doesn't say, but I'm pushing all my feelings to the side right. and ignoring them because God's word says this. It's like in the process of me talking about my soul being bowed down within me, I'm calling this to mind. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if you guys have any truths that you like call to mind when you're experiencing disappointment or grief, but if there's anything that you want to share, both of you, anybody, you can share that. No, I'm going to get the reference wrong for sure. No, But um, I remember there's a Psalm and it's, um, I am confident that I will see the goodness of, of the, the Lord, Lord in the, the land, land of the living. Yes. And yeah. I remember having to write that on the ch- the, our, our chalkboard in our house and just being like, this is not good. Mm. But God says he's still good. Yeah. So that's true. This doesn't feel true in my life right now. Mm-hmm. But kind of clinging to that. That's good. Bit, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I think that's great. And I think um, there's also a verse. It's in Psalm 34 that says, for those who fear the Lord will lack no good thing. Mm. And I think remembering that like we will not lack. Like, even in the things that I'm like praying for where I like can't see God clearly, like he is supplying what I need mm, that's good. to like get through to the other side. That's great. I think that's great. That really sets us up for our next point. So way to get Megan. We're really <laughs> unified. I didn't even read that line. So. I know, I know, I know you're being surprised in real time. So um, the first thing is pay attention to what you're paying attention to. And then the second thing that I want us to put into practice today is, or just remember honestly, is our hope is not in our answered prayer request, but in Jesus himself. Mm -hmm. So in verse, let's see, which one is this? Um, It's in verse Lamentations 324. It says, the Lord is my portion, says my soul. Therefore, I will hope in him. In my humanity, there are so many things that I'm tempted to scrap out the Lord in that sentence and the Lord is my portion and and insert something else Mm. to be my portion and my hope Mm -hmm. and my source. And sometimes that looks like answered prayer requests. And y'all, the things that I'm praying for that I feel disappointed in, like it feels like they're things that align with who God is. Like they're full of good. They're full of justice. They're full of Mm -hmm. like, I'm like, God, don't you know what good this would do for people that love you or like the world that you love? You know, it's, it's not like I'm praying for things that are, you know, outside of his scripture. It's like, I'm praying for things in his name. And I think they're things that he cares about, you know, and it's really easy to get fixated on almost making that prayer request like my little G God, Mm, you know, of like, this is the making or breaking of my faith. And so I'm challenging myself to remember, like it is Jesus himself that is my portion. It is the Lord himself that is my portion. He alone is who I will hope in, not my answer prayer requests. God's not a vending machine. Mm -hmm. This isn't a transactional relationship, you know, but in doing life with people, sometimes people disappoint you. And I think just normalizing, like sometimes we carry disappointment in our relationship with God Mm -hmm. and yet we can still have hope in him. And then the last thing, this is something I've really started to challenge myself to really think on recently is just considering if you've been praying the same prayer request for a long time, like me, you've been praying the same prayer request with your family for the last seven years. Could it be time to change your prayer even just a little bit? Mm -hmm. And what I, I don't mean like stop praying for healing or stop praying for breakthrough or stop praying for God to intervene. I just mean maybe like 
could it be time for me to just even add a little bit to that mm-hmm. prayer request of, because what I honestly haven't done as much as I've been so fixated on the outcome and the result that I'm really hoping for. And it's a good thing. It's right. not wrong. Um, I haven't as much prayed as like deeply of what God might want to do in me or through me mm-hmm. during this. And so friend, if you're on the other side of this conversation, you've been, you're like me and we're in the trenches of praying for breakthrough and something that we haven't seen progress yet. I just wonder, could it be time to change our prayer a little bit? Mm-hmm. You know, maybe add another sentence, maybe add another tagline of the not what I will, but you will God. Yeah. Or, you know, I can't see what you're doing through this situation right now. It doesn't feel good. In yeah. fact, you know, I've told you I'm disappointed. I'm grieving. I'm mourning. And yet I trust that you are doing something in me that is producing perseverance and strength. And you are sanctifying me through this in a way that I can't see right now. Mm. And I pray that like I would not get in my own way through that process. So Mm. that's kind of the last thing that I'm thinking on is just maybe it's time to change my prayer a little Mm. bit, you know, and maybe in that the disappointment will still be there. But I think that might just infuse a little bit of hope in Mm. the process that feels like it's full of grief. And just want to say too, like prayer is so complicated. There's been times where I have really disengaged in my prayer life out of all the spiritual disciplines. It probably feels the least natural for me, which people that know me may feel (laughs) caught off guard by me saying that because I'm not usually short of words, Mm -hmm. but it's such an odd, unique, beautiful, messy thing of, you know, talking with a God that I can't see with my own eyes, but I know that he's there. Mm -hmm. And so even if you're just wrestling with this whole concept of prayer and it could be because of disappointment and grief, it could just Mm -hmm. be because this feels weird. I feel like I'm talking to the air, you know? Um, I just want to say, keep going, keep trying, keep pressing in, keep calling his word to mind. And I know that because of Jesus, we may be temporarily disappointed this Mm -hmm. side of eternity, but we will not be forever disappointed. And where we are headed, our hope is secure. Our assurance is secure. um, Our inheritance in heaven is secure. And so we may weep, but the end of weeping is coming. And even if you just needed to hear that today with, you know, fresh ears, I pray that that speaks to you and blesses you. Yeah. Yeah. It reminds me of this verse that I have clung to like a lot over the last 10 years. And it's Psalm 130 verse five. I wait for the Lord. My whole being waits. And in his word, I put my hope. Mm. And I think even just remembering when we are coming to prayer and we are like so hopeful that like, God, you're going to like come through for Mm. me and you're going to answer our hope in like the thing is like gonna fail, but our hope in like the Lord is not. And I even just think about like you talking about like the timeline of I'm born and I will die. And like everything in between is a big question mark of like, Mm -hmm. but we can hope for like what happens at the end of that and trust that like, because of what is in like this book, like every single story like points to like, and like we can trust him. And most of these people did not see the other side Mm -hmm. of their story and Mm -hmm. their prayer request. And yet they like, still there's that chapter in Hebrews. It like talks all about like the hall of faith Mm -hmm. and how, all, you know, all these people go down and like, you know, they're famous in the Bible because they had like such great faith. And then it says, and it's the most disappointing verse, I think, in the whole Bible. Mm. And yet none of them saw mm. like what came to pass. Yeah. And I'm like, well, dang, like <laughs> I might not, <laughs> I might never see what yeah. like the other side of like this prayer looks like. But mm. like, I don't know what's going to happen like beyond my lifetime or like yeah. what the story yeah. of the Lord's like writing in like the grand scheme of life. And I just, yeah, I want to encourage our listeners that like mm. they're your hope like has to be in the Lord and like Absolutely. not the thing you're like praying for. Yeah. Ashley, I know you have lots to say about this. I'm sure. Well, I love what you are pointing out that both coexist mm-hmm. because I have dealt with so much shame when I'm going through something really hard. That's breaking my heart that I feel like I can't get out from underneath that. If I was just a better Christian, if I just had more faith or if someone I- said, if you just would be more grateful. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. If I would just do all these things, then it at least I would have a better perspective or I would have Mm -hmm. more peace about it. So I thought that was really good to say, like, you can be, you're going to continue to have pain and brokenness, Mm -hmm. but also you can also at the same time have faith and not shame yourself for like almost vacillating back and forth multiple times a day, even sometimes, Mm -hmm. you know, like I'm I'm believing you, Lord, you know, and back and forth. So I loved that part because I think that's real life. Yeah, that's been a game changer for me. And I think so many times I read like commands or instructions in scripture and they feel so impossible. 
And I'm like, I have to be reminded, like God wrote this knowing our limitations, you know? (laughs) And so me trying to Mm. swing the pendulum from my disappointment all the way over to like 100% joy and gratitude and, you know, dancing (laughs) and singing and shouts Mm -hmm. of praise is like really putting an unrealistic limitation on myself yeah, that I that I don't have such a good um, I do want to pray for our listeners today who may yeah. be walking through grief and disappointment is now a good time for that yeah, or should I okay so if you are on the other side of our voices today and you are experiencing grief and disappointment around prayer I want you to just pause wherever you are mm-hmm. maybe don't pause if you're driving that would be unsafe <laughs> but pause just for a second and just receive this prayer and just feel encouraged that you have three friends on the other side that are championing with you, that are believing um, in what you're believing in. So I'm going to pray. God, we love you. And we know that you are so capable, God. You are good. You are loving. You are gracious. You're kind. You're merciful. You're full of power, full of strength. And we bring our requests to you with confidence, knowing your abilities, God. We know that you're powerful. And so we're not going to stop praying. We're not going to stop crying out. But I just pray in the things that we're bringing to you that have either been no's or the things that have been long, not yet. I pray, God, that you would give us courage to be people who stick with you, to be with people who call to mind the truths in your word, even when we don't see in our circumstances anything that looks like that. I pray that you would continue to stir our faith, even when our circumstances make us feel like we're faithless. I pray that you would just remind us that our hope is not an answer prayer request or in the yeses that we get from you, but our hope is in Jesus alone. Mm -hmm. And I pray that you challenge each of us in the different areas of things that we're walking through. You know what they are, Mm -hmm. that it may be time to change our prayer request just a little bit. God, would we open ourselves up to what you might want to do in us and through us, even through our suffering, even through our disappointment, even through our grief, would we be available to be vessels that would be just filled with your glory, even in the midst of those things? God, I pray for my friends who are waiting for answers. I join with them. I grab their hands and I say, we are believing for these things in Jesus' name. And we wait in faith, God. We know you can. We trust you will. And we're thankful that you never leave us to navigate any of this by ourselves. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thanks, Shay. I think just... Yeah, I hope our listeners walk away knowing that their disappointment and their desires can coexist and the Lord is there to handle that. Mm -hmm. I think the second we stop going to him is where we get ourselves in trouble. And so I think we can bring those two things together to him. Um, And so, friends, we don't want you to miss. We have one more episode in this series, and we're super excited to hear from our friend Wendy Blight. If you do not know her, she is a prayer warrior, if there ever was one. Um, And so I'm really excited to learn from her. And so if you don't want to miss that, make sure you subscribe to us on the podcast on YouTube. Um, and so you won't miss an episode. And the final thing I want to share with our listeners is that we have a new study guide out. And if you're on YouTube, I'm going to show it to you because I think it is pretty. It's um, pretty. it's called praying through the Psalms 30 ways to 30 days to uncomplicate how you talk to God. Shay and I actually both got to work on this project together. Um, and so if you enjoyed learning from her via the podcast, you will enjoy just, um, walking through, you know, like we talked about, David was kind of all over the place and he can, those two things can coexist. Mm -hmm. Um, and we just want to give you guys all the tools and resources you need to have a thriving prayer life where you can experience intimacy with the Lord. Because at Proverbs 31 Ministries, we believe if you know the truth of God's word and you live that truth, it will change everything. And so we, so thank you for your time and we'll see you on the next episode.